Hi everybody, my name is Jan Dufour and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Today I'm going to be showing you a few things. First of all, our new in colors for 2021 to 2023, which is coming up in our new annual catalog that begins on May 4th. The colors are evergreen, evening evergreen. I'm gonna get them wrong a couple of times until I learn these really well. This is my favorite, so I'm not gonna get this one wrong. It's soft succulent. This one is a fresh freesia. This one is pale papaya. And this one is polished pink. The one I'm gonna be doing today for you is using the, um, well, the, Fresh Freesia. So I'm going to put these away. The other thing I'm going to be demonstrating is one of our new uh, stamp sets that's going to be available in the new catalog. So it's not available yet. It's called Butterfly Brilliance. It is all one stamp. I'll show it in the stamp apparatus because that's what I'm going to be using when I stamp. As you can see, it's all one big stamp so it stamps a lot of butterflies all at the same time. I have this in here because I haven't cleaned the stamp um, and I will be using it again shortly. The other thing I'm going to show you which is some new brushes that we got in our new mini catalog and they come, I gotta get my right ones here, they come three together and I got two sets so I have six of them and I know there's seven colors in the rainbow, but I use violet and indigo in the same one. So basically I have one for every um, color in the rainbow. And you can use them in anything in the same color family and it doesn't damage your ink pad or the brush itself. You can wash them off, but I'm too lazy to do that. You can just brush until it's all gone away. And even though it's still stained, it will be fresh when you use it. So we're gonna use the new brushes today and three of the new colors. So I'm going to start with the palest color, uh, which is the pale papaya, It's kind of a yellowish color. And I'm going to just make some background color. I don't want a lot of color. Um, these, even though it's a light color, if you just plunk it down, it's going to make a dot. And you don't really want to see that. You want it all blended. So you just do this a couple of times, then very lightly drag it, and then start applying pressure. Now, because um, Pale Papaya is such a light color, I'm only going to stamp off a little bit or, or pounce off or whatever you want to call it um, so that it doesn't take forever to get some color on here. But I think I'm happy with that. You can always go back, of course. So I'm going to put this away. And think next I'm going to bring in some fresh freesia and tap off. See, it makes a very prominent. And again, I am just barely pulling it on there. And then as you hear the brush make more noise, I am pressing down more. Um, and that way you don't get too much pouncing. And if you do get a little bit of a, of a pounce, it's okay. You can either cover it up with another stamp brush some more color on it. Um, there's usually a way that you can get around getting the color that you don't want on there so much. And then lastly, I'm going to use some soft succulent, which I love. It's a grayish green. It's so pretty. Um, put this on here. As you can see, it can be a rather prominent color. So I'm going to be very super soft on it at first and then start pressing in a little bit more. You can make clouds, you can make all kinds of things with this. You can make it very prominent. You can make uh, rainbows with it if you want to by pressing really hard. But I just basically don't want a white sheet of cardstock, which is what I'm doing basically here to, to cover it up. All right. so. Once you have that, I wanna stamp my butterflies on there. And as you can maybe did not notice, cause I didn't show you well enough, I highlighted different butterflies. This one's down at the bottom. This is the one I'm doing uh, now, which is the larger one in the front. But you don't have to pick the large one. As you can see, all of them kind of work. And I did, 
stamp just on basic white. So that'll be the butterfly that I color and I'll show you how I did that. Um, but I do want some color in the background. I don't wanna bring this all the way down because I want to make sure that I use, that I get this butterfly in there completely. Um, and some of it being off the page is fine because some of it's gonna get cut out. So I'm gonna go ahead and find my Memento Black. And as I've shown in possibly other videos, if you've seen them, um, when there's such fine detail, either in words or in the stamp, I rub uh, rather than pounce on them. I feel like that gives me a more consistent, good result. When you pounce, sometimes you get little areas of more ink than in others, and it can, I don't wanna say blobby, but it can be thicker than what you may have wanted. Now, that's a perfectly great stamp. That's why I use the Stamparatus. I know I can always get one. I like my butterfly background ink to be really black. So I do it a second time. And that just makes everything nice and dark. And then if I had misstamped in any of the locations, I could go back and make it um, better. So as you can see, this is very black. And now I'm going to cover this up because... I don't want to clean it off right now. All right, so for my card, I have a four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. And I want this butterfly to be the third layer. So I am actually using uh, a piece of our basic black, and that is cut at uh four by five and a quarter. So that'll be on top of this. And then I want the white or the basic um, basic white with the stamp to be next. Now, if I just cut this down to the, the size of seven and three and seven eighths by five and an eighth, I, I could, if I cut it off of this side, I'll cut off my, the butterfly that I want. So what I do basically because it's on kind of just a non-size, is I make sure that I get the butterfly that I want without it being cut in the card. So now I know this edge, and I'll save this because it's nicely decorated. So I know that this edge is, is going to be fine. And I need the size to be three and seven eighths. So I'll put three and seven eighths on that and cut off the other side because it doesn't matter if those butterflies uh, are cut off. I'll do the same thing. I'm going to get rid of some white space here. It doesn't matter if the butterflies are in. I have to decide if I want more of this butterfly to show or more of this butterfly to show. I guess I'll do more of this butterfly showing. So I will cut that off and then measure to be five and an eighth. So we'll do five and an eighth. And that's taking a little bit of the top of the butterfly off and that's fine. So then I have the correct size for the part that's going on the card. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere with my multi-purpose glue the back of the card. Now when the, the normal or I, I shouldn't say normal, the most often seen card stacking, if you will, different colors added, um, is when you leave an eighth of an inch all the way around. So basically you take your first measurement and subtract a quarter of an inch, and that leaves it an eighth of an inch all around. That's what I would say is the most common. Sometimes I like to have uneven borders where I have a, uh, an eighth of an inch, and this is only a sixteenth of an inch. If you're going to do that, you have to make sure that you're very accurate on your cut. A sixteenth of an inch all the way around is not a whole lot of spots. Um, so you have to just be very careful when you're cutting that you are on the spot that you actually want. And my little phrase in my head is three sides are right, here, here, and here, the fourth side will be right. Isn't that cute? So there's my saying. So I'm gonna put this aside because now I want to cut my butterfly. 
I'm gonna, for lack of space, I have to do this separately because I don't have a lot of room. Here is my Stamparatus. And I'm gonna take out my stencil that ha or my die cut that has, it's all in one, it matches. I'm gonna scoot this for a second. It matches, so I'm gonna take and place it I'm gonna come down a little bit here. There's a lot of places to look, so you just kinda work it until you're comfortable with where it's at. Uh, I think I'll do it this way. And then, make your sandwich. I'll come back over here, make it go through. And of course, this is gonna cut out lots of butterflies which is cool. And then I have, I put them in the case um, that has all of the stamped butterflies. I'm gonna take this off. And as you can see, it cuts out beautiful butterflies. Now, the other thing is, this is only one of the die cuts. It's the only one I'm using today. But I will show you, um, actually, yeah, I will show you that the rest of it, oops, almost lost this little guy. The rest of it is the intricate cuts. So I could take this very same butterfly that I'm actually gonna be coloring, put this in here, and it would cut out all of the white spaces. And so then, anything you put on top of it, it would, the color would show through. So it's a very beautiful die set. Um, has some bricks and some textures that you can use in the backgrounds. It has another little one here I couldn't fit on the other side. So I'm gonna put that away before I lose any of the little ones. All right, there we go. Um, and actually I can show you an example what it looks like when you cut it out. Um, here, maybe. There's a, an example of the butterfly cut out. So pretty. I just did that out of um, one of our, one of our um, different designer series papers that has multicolors. So I'm gonna take all these guys. I'm gonna keep this guy because I'm gonna put him on the inside of the card. I'll color these. Close that up so that I have that later. And I'll put that over there. And get rid of my paper parts. Okay, on to coloring. Now, I am not an artist. I'm a little crooked here, but I am not an artist. So I always say that I color like a kid colors with a little extra. <laughs> um, I enjoy coloring. And I like blending. These are our Stampin' Blends, and I'm using the same three colors, the Pale Papaya, the Soft Succulent, and the Fresh Freesia. Um, I enjoy coloring, but in, in this particular butterfly, it, it's not impossible, but it would be more difficult to add a lot of shading. Um, the, the areas are kind of small, um, I think maybe because I, I also make the black very black, that it, it also makes a difference. Um, I don't know that there's a butterfly that exists that is actually these colors, because I've been making the, my butterflies all kinds of colors. Just anything that matches my page, I'm happy with. Um, but anyway, so as far as coloring, I, I'm not doing any shading on this particular color. And I think I'll do this guy at the same time uh, I don't know if I've colored him yet. We'll do this, 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 like that. So I'm not even gonna use the dark color. Um, then on the Fresh Freesia, I always start, when I, when I do my shading, I always start with the lightest color. I've listened to videos. I've heard people say, oh, I always start with the dark and then put in the light, or I always put the light then let it dry, then I go back in with the, the dark. I have done it all kinds of different ways. That should have been light, the freesia. 
Um, I've done it all kinds of different ways. The, what works the best for me is I color not too intentionally, um, as you can see, <laughs> um, in the light color. I don't wait for it to, to lighten or darken or dry or any of that. Um, I follow Stampin' Up! as far as um, they put this black uh, shading in for you so that it's, it's already there. Um, and then, as you can see, I make short little lines like this to color so that I don't get a straight edge because that's much harder to blend. So I'm just making short lines next to the part that I want to show as um, darker. And so I just make lines and then before it dries or as it dries or it'll re-wet when you put this in here anyway, I just go back and take the lighter and try to um, blend it in. And I don't, I don't decide whether it's enough or good enough for a couple of minutes because the ink does sink into the paper and blend beyond what I've done. So I don't know if you can see it right yet. Oops, there we go. But as far as I'm concerned, this is the only place where I see a line. So after a little bit of drying, I'm going to go back in and do one or two lines. And that'll erase the fact that it looks like there's a line. Um, when there are larger areas, I have... I'm going to use a smaller tip. Um, I have spent more time with blending and I it makes me happy. I enjoy it. But I just don't think that on this particular card in this amount of space that I have that I can do much um, blending. So rather than take the time to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and color in. Um, and then I'll use the darker one for in here. And again, I, I just kind of want it to blend in. So I'm just using stripe marks, stripe marks. I don't know, flashes a little bit of. Then I'm going to go back with this light color. The light color is the color I, I actually do blending on, blending with. And, and then again, I, I wait um, because it, it will soak in into the paper. And I think that that creates enough. Um, I'm going to move the light and bring this closer so that you can see some of the, the blending. Uh, sorry about that phone call. Oop. And then this one, I think I'm just going to add a little bit of, oh no, not fresh freesia because that's the color of the card. I'm going to use um, the soft succulent. Some people say some of these really look more like moths and that's probably true, but they're called beautiful butterflies or brilliant butterflies. So that's what we're going to go with. Um, and this is just going to be pasted on the inside of the card to give it a little oomph, a little surprise when you open up the card. But it has something else in there, which I think is kind of fun. Okay, there they go. And we'll take this card and we'll just bend up the wings a little bit. And you can use, this is actually would probably take a mini dimensional, but we also have these um, strips of uh, adhesive foam tape. So it's just easier to put one right down the middle and pull that off. And I put that on top. And then on the inside, we're going to use a... Oops, well, maybe we're going to use, I'll grab a sheet, I didn't take one out. 
Um, I usually put a white on the inside um, simply because this is light, light enough you could write on it. Um, but I, I just think people prefer to, to white to write on white. So I'm gonna just put that right here. Better yet, we didn't put the phrase on the front, but I wanted to glue this down so it has a second to, to dry. Used and made a lot of cards. My glue's getting down there. I love it, it's so inexpensive and it goes so far. So we're gonna just put that here and I can close it. Well, actually, let me go ahead and paste this guy in here too. Place for you to have a little bit of saying. There we go. Um, and on the front, the sentiment, we're gonna do it on, where's my white? This, and the saying is, get well soon. That's from Mini Mates. That's going away. Um, May 3rd is the last day that you can order from it. So they, they have a lot of tight sayings and then some little uh, bylines, I think they call them. So I'm just gonna stamp that with the Fresh Freesia. And then we're gonna cut with our double oval. I'm gonna cut out the get well soon. It just barely fits in there. And then we're gonna cut out a fresh freesia, just the, the larger one with the scallop edge. And then I'm going to apply glue or adhesive on this. And then I'll pop up the other one so that they kind of coordinate together with the pop-up. And those I will put on with Stampin' Dimensionals. I'm not putting this one in the mail, so I'm only gonna put two. If I was mailing it, I would probably put four. It helps keep it consistent and not bendy. And this can go here. Depending on which one you use and where it's situated, I have some of them up at the top, some of them at the bottom. Um, again, our new stamp catalog comes out May 4th. Last time to order is May 3rd. You can order on my website at jandufor.stampinup.net. Um, you can go to my blog. My blog is stamp me silly dot com and uh actually i'm sorry i have it right here and on my blog spot i i have videos and some tips and i don't post but maybe twice a month sometimes three times a month this month was get well cards which is the reason for the get well next month i'll be doing just because cards uh, those ones that you just send to friends or family just because I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope to have some comments on my website. Post anytime you like. Thanks for watching. Bye.